as I introduced, that, uh, my name is Yoshi Yamaguchi. I'm the executive vice president in charge of the technology development. Uh, not only covering what has been Nissan side, but also we cover the remote as Alliance. And as an example, it's the uh, Alliance uh, Global Vice President in charge of the innovation. So uh, we are very open to answer any question related to the technology and also the including the Alliance. So let's start the discussion. Any question? Any questions? Hello, uh, my name is David Loki from uh, New Mexico. Yeah. So um, I would like to ask. What are the uh, thank you. what are the uh, most important issues that have to be jet resolved when it comes to autonomous driving vehicles? There, there are many important issues to be solved, and, and uh, but uh, the, the, let me explain. There are two types of the, the, the paths that we need to expand. What is the path to expand the thing? Sim, driving sim. And we have the clear plan to implement it, as I said. The first step is the automatic driving technology, that is the, the focusing on the single lane. And the second step is the technology that has the capability of the lane change, especially on the highway. That's the second step. And the final step is the automatic driving technology, including the city. That's a roadmap to expand the scene. And, but uh, we have the other end of the, the pass. The, the, that is the responsibility. Responsibility change from the driver to the vehicle. At the beginning, if we implement automatic driving technology, the fundamental driver has a responsibility. That's qualified by the regulation. But someday, the, the, the Responsibility from the driver can be changed to the vehicle. So that's another discussion. So the, that these two elements is the challenge of us. And then the, more specifically, with the challenge of the technology, we need to develop the technology more reliable. And also the lab is another element of the challenge. But it's not everything. In addition to the challenge of the technology, I think the, the other element of the challenge is as the price of the sky. Because current regulation doesn't allow the hands to be on the eyes of the body. It must be changed. And also, the, 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 when the diamond comes to another the, the, the autonomous body, which people have the responsibility, maybe vehicle technology is not enough. It must be realized by the combination between big technology and the road resources. So there are examples of the challenge we are facing in the future. But our, our strategy is to implement technology step by step. Because we don't believe everything half one the same. In, in his uh, speech earlier at the, at the press conference, Carlos Ghosn uh, listed a series of countries for the rollout of 1.0 and then I assume 2.0 uh, technology. Uh, were, those, were those countries chosen in that order for their regulatory climate or for cultural um, ease of adoption? And would you say on a composition level, which is, which is the greater hurdle? Is it, is it the regulatory climate in some countries or is it the cultural opposition to autonomous driving? At the first step, still the driver has a responsibility. So in that case, regulation change is not required. Usually. But the, 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 the when you talk about the kind of the ISO, the regulation change is required. So the, 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 from the regulation standpoint, nothing is decided as of today. But we know the country who has to start a discussion. So then to answer your question, regulation is one element, and the other element it custom. Then, the, especially the Japan, United States, and the China, we believe that 
customer want to pay for that, want to buy from the customer. So there's the two elements, is the distribution and customer. Can you name more uh, country examples where, where uh, people would be willing to pay more for autonomous driving than other countries where they consider it to be actually a step down? I'm sure the, 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 the country, even the United States, and Europe, and the Japan, discussion of the autonomous driving is relatively much than other countries. That means relatively more prepared than other countries. Because autonomous driving requires kind of a big change of the mindset. So that the customer and driving must be prepared. It's impossible that everyone, everyone can understand it. But still, certain level of the customer and society must be prepared. Do you see regulators beginning to accept the concept of when any problems with Nissan? Uh, I remember talking to him on several occasions, and he was, at least two years ago, fairly convinced the U.S. regulators would not approve it. And yet now, NHTSA, Department of Transportation, state governments, all rushing, seeming to accept. So are you seeing a change in the government mindset? Yes, we see the change of the mindset of the government. And uh, nothing is perfectly subtle, to be honest. Nothing, nothing is perfectly subtle. But we know that very clear discussion is happening in the subtle market. How to accept the technology of the autonomous driving? So the, the question is just a timing for me. When you, say, when you say the change you're talking about the market as in consumers, the market as in regulators, or both? Both. So, in order to make all of the technology work together, it requires processing abilities. Is the processing technology that exists today in 2015 adequate for the job that you want it to do in 2020, 2021, 2022? What we have today in our laptops, what we have today in cars, when you, when you put a car in reverse and it backs up and the screen takes a second to click on, is that adequate for what you need or are you waiting for better processing? It must be both. But, and uh, I explain step by step introduction that come from the difficulty of the technology. When you talk about autonomous planning, just about the one hand, the, the requirement of the evolution of the technology is there. So, but when you talk about autonomous planning, including the city, the much higher evolution should be necessary for the process of technology. That's why we plan to implement technology. Yes, Mr. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, autonomous driving is catching uh, good attention recently is the, uh, thanks to the progress of CP power and uh, Availability of high performance loads and sensors. So, we are, in a sense, counting on the progress of the process, including the CPU sensors and methodology to apply artificial intelligence, like uh, deep learning, that type of different uh, methodology. So, uh, we have been working on autonomous driving technology for the past 20 years. But it's only recent 10 years when we start seriously looking at commercializing the technology. So, as the announcement said, we still go step by step, but it's in line with the progress that's elemental technology. Also, isn't it true that your, your CPP, your processing uh, demands, may be highest now versus in the future you may have? so many more uh, more inputs and a more precise idea of where the vehicle is and where all the other vehicles are, such that you need to 
anticipate more uh, unpredictable, more possibilities now than you might in the future? Is, is there sort of a reverse, uh, a need for more sensors in the future, but actually perhaps lower accuracy processing ability? Uh, to me, maybe there are several other things, but to me, the bottleneck is availability of the element, element technology. Let's get a visual sensor of our power consumption. If we are allowed to consume, I don't know, 2,000 watts or 3,000 watts in addition to the electricity that we consume from home board, probably we can do, do more. So clearly, there's a bottleneck in availability of CP power against uh, uh, electricity consumption and packaging side and so on. And one of the demonstrators we are showing uh, on the screen uh, is totally de dependent on the most recent availability of sensors. Otherwise, we, we still have a <laughs> big uh, rotating machine, but uh, we don't need it anymore for uh, prospect or production. We, we talk about technology, the need to get that here. When I drove the other day in one of the cars, uh, it seemed to me that the gaps that you have to question, you've got a bit of Moore's Law going on here. You can see progress moving fairly consistent with projections. But as I, as I drove, what I saw were a lot of issues with programming, uh, some of which probably weren't even thought about two years ago. There was an MIT study that just came out, you're probably aware of it. Uh, which talks about the Hobson's choice issue. I've got a kid who runs across in front of me. I can either hit him or I can steer and risk going into oncoming traffic. Who do I kill? That guy, that guy, or myself. But I have to kill somebody. So that's one of the choices. Isn't that where some of the biggest challenges will come in, in the, the thought of thinking behind it? That's a very philosophical question. And you are, you are right. And uh, some accidents happen. If the, the all vehicle is driven by the autonomous driving, at least accidents doesn't happen. But uh, still, other vehicle is driven by the driver. The driver can make it. In that case, autonomous driving, vehicle needs to decide which bus we should take. And obviously, we need to decide case by case. We don't have a very clear single solution on <coughs> to decide case by case. Uh, however, the, 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 one of the obvious thing is even accidents happen. As a total, we believe the, the, the autonomous driving technology can contribute to the reduction of an action significantly. Even we accept the fact that accidents happen because all the, the, the kind of data <coughs> of the other drivers. I agree. And that's all programs that you still have. Exactly. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, I'm Adam. Uh, how have how will customer attitudes change when you take the wheel out of their hand towards maintenance? Uh, towards second level second level involvement in car ownership. How, once they give up the wheel. Obviously, the way that they take care of and treat their cars will change. So has your R&D team started looking at these second-level concerns? What happens when it's an autonomous ICE engine and all of a sudden they don't have an interest in changing their own oil because they're not bonded with the car in the same way? It has, has your team considered that? Really, your, your, your question is when a vehicle becomes driverless. Driverless. Mm -hmm. Right, then mm -hmm. uh, customers don't own cars anymore and it's kind of shared ownership. Shared ownership. Did you uh, imply that? Yes. Yes. Uh, technically, we don't have, frankly speaking, uh, we don't have any precise size on that. But uh, from the business model point of view, we feel we have to anticipate that transformation in the industry. Because if cars are available, driverless, Taxi type truck, the big steps we have available. Then maybe many customers will change the choice of owning a car or just using such a driverless taxi. Then it will impact the industry. But this is 
it's more like a, a how we apply the technology to create what kind of product, what kind of community we can So we could do another discussion. Technical. Paul, I think, touched on a really important point, though. When, when, you, uh, when, you bring, when you bring this cultural and uh, attitudinal shift into the engineering discussion, does that change the way that engineers are approaching the problem in the first place? Has your team encountered a problem where we say, mathematically, the solution is this, but culturally or due to customer attitudes that are shifting, we can't do it this way? Has that happened? We are still early stage of the evolution for the full uh, education that I have. So, practice we can get engineers are still too busy to uh, find uh, solutions for next year, years later, four years later. And of course, research is another thing I have. So, that is how people should communicate to the industry and other people. And including for driverless uh, and mobility and how people would want to own or not to own the car, but to move to the implementation, changing the business like oil change or maintenance. It's part of the discussion, but uh, I think, I think that, uh, it's affecting the thinking of the engineers uh, must be working on Thank you. Talking about the IDS concept from this morning, Mr. Jones said that it introduces piloted drive. Are we to understand that it's piloted drive 1.0 or 2.0 in that car? And secondly, when will we see 1.0 in a production car from this time? 1.0 is the, the big group which has the capability of the single rank of Thomas Rafi. That will be in production 2016. For Japan market? Yes. And 2.0 is the technology, which has the capability of the range change and the pilot drive on high. So that definition of the 1.0 and the What are your, uh, either of you, what are your thoughts about, um, so Tesla Motors recently you know, revealed their auto steering system, and um, the big asterisk of this auto steering system was that it, it is a beta, it, it, it's in test mode, it's a beta system, but they're rolling it out to all the cars that can handle it now. Um, how do you feel about a system like this that offers a uh, lane change capability and semi-piloted? Self-titled driving. Um, how do you feel about it being tested this way? Is, is this anything that needs to be better considered? Actually, I can't make comment on the Tesla. It's up to them, uh, but uh, uh, it's a different approach from us. Are you concerned <coughs> um, <coughs> that in the future autonomous cars can so naturally? I think, uh, oh, sorry. Christine. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nissan's approach seems to be different. Uh, before releasing the product, they have extensive uh, fuel test. And then they have to guarantee the safety of the uh, autonomous drive, whatever the goal it is. So I, I, I'm not saying that Tesla is not doing that, because we don't have enough information of uh, the other uh, companies. But that's the approach that we are trying to take. That's why we are. Step by step interaction with the autonomous system. And we are committed to launch autonomous driving within the lane, but it should be safe enough, not the beta. <laughs> it's what is a pr production, uh, mass production uh, product. And uh, how many, uh, what's, what's your measure for saying that it's, that it's there, that it's out of beta, that it's ready for, for proper rollout? Internal eight to check the readiness. So 
media reviews about the performance itself, about the under this weather and what if uh, this kind is working on the freeway. But if, so those are uh, seen independent analysis to be made. Secondly, there's a, a product liability check uh, for non engineers and lawyers. And then we have a, a field test. Uh, maybe field test cannot be a perfect proof, but still, if we accumulate lots of uh, uh, situations in the real field, probably it will be a good support that the maturity of the technology uh, will be uh, appropriate to the top of not that data. So that's kind of the uh, process uh, what we already employ and try to complete before using the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, when we talk about, we drove the or we rode in the, uh, the prototype and saw that it worked. The concept worked. It worked. You have a few years still to perfect enough to turn it over to the consumer. What is it that you want to perfect in the next five years? What is it that you want uh, the pixel? Clarity <laughs> improved. Do you want? Is there more code that needs to be? What is it that remains to be done in order to say we are ready? What, what technologically? What do you have to do? Um, I think that the, the sensing system. So you would probably use the uh, sensors we already have in the prototype. Absolutely. Then. The, the challenge is how to brush up the logic, control logic, and policy, how to uh, uh, steer, trade, and accelerate in the context of uh, real structure. So that, that's the first part. But as I mentioned, in order to prove that it works, uh, and at the product, production level, we have to continue uh, the extent, extensive uh, field test. And of course, traffic regulation and traffic reality, uh, driving ethics will be different region by region. So we have to go market by market to prove that we have enough data that uh, our system works in each region. I think that's the challenge. So, but for instance, when you say code, additional code writing, code writing to do what, for example? Today, frankly speaking, there are still so many uh, uh, abnormal situations mm -hmm. that we have not in included. So, in a typical situation, it's quite possible. For example, if there's no other traffic, there's no heavy <laughs> truck, no bicycle, it's very easy, even in a city environment. But uh, if you have a pedestrian bicycle, which is not obeying the traffic rule, by the way, <laughs> and if the people is making a right turn, left turn, when they are not supposed to. So there are so many uh, 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 how should I say, uh, abnormal situations on top of reasonable situations. So there, there, there's no end actually to include all the possibilities. But we have to be reasonable enough to include those potential risks depending on the level of the uh, autonomous traffic. If it's a uh, Autonomous driving on, within the lane on the highway, probably such possibility. So the variety of possibilities would be very limited. But if you go to a uh, lane change, probably there will be more abnormalities. If you go to the city driving, probably it's one level higher in terms of the diversity of such, such situations we have to take care of. So coding. Hello, my name is Camilo Gilbert from Mexico. I understand perfectly the benefits of autonomous driving, but uh, are you concerned in the future when you achieve the product of autonomous car, the next generation uh, lose the ability to drive by themselves? I don't have the serious concern on that because we believe the spirit 
to the customer by the big group because they like to drive it. And uh, our the, the goal of the autonomous driving is not the driver is That's the kind of the, 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 the big group which has the capability that driver has that assume and the capability that the big group driver has on behalf of the driver in order to deliver the value of safety, recipe, or fit and value. So that's the concept of autonomous driving. Because we believe that also the customer will be able to buy the vehicle. Thank you for your testimony. Security. Um, the, the two elements here. One, Tesla is downloading data directly. Uh, your thoughts about that. And then secondly, the whole issue of security. Uh, there's so many access points into the vehicle now, we're adding potentially lots more connected driving elements. Uh, we know how, how crazy hackers are. So, mm -hmm. how big an issue is that? You are at cyber security, the, the one with important priority would be that receive them. And then the, the, I think the the technology to secure that one. Do you, do you feel like there is a solution? There seem to be some people, probably since it's really company and very company, several, that seem to be saying we have to go to a completely different model mm -hmm. uh, to be able to secure the car than traditional laptops and other computers. Do you think that can be done? Can you really seal off the car? I think we don't have a good answer <laughs> right now. And I feel it's kind of a non competitive area. So we, we are discussing a common approach with other automakers. And uh, but before we have such a uh, good solution, I think each company is trying to secure uh, uh, such a uh, capability to protect a potential attack. For example, uh, we have a very solid design not to uh, enable the access from outside to change the software data vehicle control side. The account data is transmitted to the communication side, but uh, access from outside is not be available mm -hmm. in, in the car in the road to next year. So it's not a perfect solution because we will want to change the data and the control software. But uh, I think we have to have a very realistic approach to how can protect the Thank you very much. Um, but I, I'm sure you guys want to ask many questions. Yes. Uh, so that's... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You asked me questions. Good. I'm glad. Okay. I think I think there needs to be discussion on your stuff, right? Yes. Inviting us is the perfect range of yeah. I can drive it when I want to, <laughs> but when I don't want to, it's automatic. Oh, why don't you stop there? Exactly. Why do you need to do all that? Stuff? You know what? We're going to have to set up subject that needs to be discussed. And we don't. We don't. I think the effects the car for the month of I think when people stop driving, they stop watching it. You also don't need to worry about driving dynamics. Why do you need to build a front door car if nobody drives? How does that keep it? It's, it's an interesting discussion, and it's cool to be on the in the same room with all of these.